Core Cat, recruit Riska. Okay, this is going to sound preposterous given our last conversation, and I guess practically every conversation preceding it, and I'm probably going to have to do something completely disgusting like apologize. And even though I'll hate myself for it, I will totally mean it. I promise. Like, really, really mean it. You're going to ask me to join your team, aren't you? Yeah, how did you know? I don't seem to have much choice now. Arabia kicked me off the good team. <laughs> wow, that is great. Wait, sorry. No, wait. I don't have to apologize. That's right. You have no choice now. I apologize to myself for offering you a shitty, meaningless apology. Apology accepted, car cat. Let's bury the thresher with the totally platonic bro bulge bump. Bump. <laughs> you dork. Do you really think your usual pedantic quips are going to bug me now? I'm not trying to bug you. I'm trying to get you to join my damn team. Now step in line, Sir Cat. I was just betrayed and abandoned by my two accomplices and best pals, and on top of that, I am soaked in the blood of my Lucis, which I just had to decapitate myself. So listening to a crabby asshole be all tickled with his own mediocre retorts isn't going to spoil my evening. Okay, well, sorry to hear about that, but I mean, you can just dump her carcass in the kernel and bring her back stronger than ever. Wow, uh, good to know, I guess. Now why don't you hop in the trap, wash that nasty blue shit off, and join our fucking session already? What? It's so rude to dictate hygiene procedure to a lady, under any circumstance, even for douchey loudmouths with delusions of leadership. Maybe you should try to think about the dumb things that fall out of your protein chute for once, Vantus. Blah, blah, blah. Now my shoot is doing a fucking stellar impression of something that doesn't give a shit. Anyway, you know my blood's the prettiest, and you'd obviously kill to have it. No, it sucks. Totally happy with mine. Nice try, though. B.S. Why would you hide behind your lame gray anonymity, then? You do realize everyone thinks that's totally lame, right? It's nobody's business. I don't see why it should be a matter of public record. I'm not going to wear that shit on my sleeve like you do. Literally and figuratively, it's private, so everyone can go point their probing busybody snuff nodes up their own impertinent seed flaps. Fine, like anyone really cares. It's just lame and insecure. So why don't you tell me what I've got to do here? I await instruction from my big shot A-blooded leader. Okay, first things first. You've got to connect with Tavros quickly and get him in the session before he gets killed. Uh... What? Can't someone else do that? No, why? <laughs> What's the big deal? Just do it. But I hate that guy. Who cares? This is your command decision? Getting someone who hates a guy to save his life? Pretty weak, boss. Why do you even hate him? It's fucking ridiculous. If anything, you should pity him. Especially since you were the one who paralyzed him. I know. I don't really understand it. It's just a really special kind of hate. It never goes away and it doesn't make a lot of sense. This is kind of a weird time to be confiding in me about your feelings of black romance, but okay. Oh god, what? I mean, if you're really implying that Tavros is your kismesis, I really think you're bringing up the wrong Franz nub. Both parties have to hate each other equally. I mean, like, true hate? Maybe your feelings come somewhat closer to fitting the bill, but I don't think he can hate anyone. It's weird, he's kind of broken in the head. Fuck, what are you talking about? I think this subject is beyond a lot of people's grasp, but I know a lot about it. Nobody ever really wants to talk to me about it, though. <laughs> Whoa, really? Oh, no shit, really? Okay, most people who haven't had their lobe stem cauterized are capable of feeling the two primary emotions, hate and pity. Pity is, of course, just the toned-down version of the central emotion, hate, and all the nuances of pity manifest as various other kinds of feelings like whatever chemical reactions trigger mating fondness, or the mysterious forces that are behind more allegiance. Harkat, holy fuck, so boring. A well-balanced person is gonna have good distribution between hate and the various pity humors. Having a good balance keeps all the emotions sharper. See, I think that's your problem. 
Oh, I hope you know I already wore out some good note-taking pens today. All the pens. All of them. See, my hate is like a finely tuned instrument because I'm aware of these principles. I could hate a hole in paradox space itself, straight through a new reality fresh for the hating. <laughs> you don't even know how much I'm laughing at this. But see, you're too heavy on the hate side. Or at least you pretend to be, which is maybe worse. You aren't reading anything I say, are you? You just want to talk and talk and talk. And you think you're hating up everyone hard when you're really just burning out the entire emotional hemisphere. It's like lukewarm hate. Pretenders hate with no counterpoint at all. As there's no real substance to your hate, it's like a cardboard movie prop. Which is why your brain is broken, kind of like Tavros's, but on the opposite hemisphere, I guess. Or maybe your broken brain led to the imbalance in the first place? I, I don't know. Whatever the case is, you're kind of emotionally screwed, sorry to say. Your hate's too dull for a proper kismesis, in my opinion. And I don't see anyone chomping at the bit to be your moral, honestly. Unless there's someone out there who would actually bother pitying you. <laughs> and landing a mate sprint? <laughs> Seriously, like that would even interest you. Basically, any feature of your emotional profile that usually makes someone viable in the Red Rom department must be totally fried. Your Black Rom potential is probably toast too. Hey, are you there? Oh, yeah, I started tuning you out. Are you done? No way, I could go on. This is fascinating. Tell me how the fuck this isn't fascinating. Did you learn this crap from your awful romance movies? They're really intriguing sociologically. Incredibly complex, sophisticated stories, you wouldn't get it. Hey asshole, stop watching movies for girls. What part of intriguing sociologically don't you understand? Also, they're awesome. Shut up. Ah, okay. Man, just let me connect to stupid boy dumb fuck so I don't have to listen to this anymore. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait. I never even got to the damn point. What is it now? I didn't need you specifically to connect to Tavros. I mean, I could have gotten any schlub to do that. You just have to get in here ASAP because I really need your mind powers. You do? I mean, obviously you do. Duh. What for? I ran into someone here. A sort of double agent, I guess? His name is Jack. He has some inside information about his kingdom. He wants to work together with us to overthrow the Black Queen. So I said okay, and now I need your help. Um, okay, I can try. What does he know? He recently got a hold of some intel regarding a weakness in the Queen's defenses. I don't know any more than that, but we've got to hurry and get started on this thing, or it could get kind of awkward. Awkward? What do you mean? I mean, he's just standing here now, waiting for me, I guess? But it's okay, I think he's pretty much settled down. Settled down? Well, he stabbed me once. Oh, uh, only once? Are you sure you should trust him? I don't know if I would, but hey, I'm not the leader. No, no, it's cool. He's cool. It's fine. I don't really mind the stabbing. It was all a misunderstanding. Well, okay, I'm pretty sure he meant to stab me, but I kind of think that's like... the way he greets people? This game is so stupid. In any case, I think he's probably all stabbed out. Phew. Oh, man. Since you're bleeding, I should ask Terezi what color your blood is. <laughs> good luck with that. She can't see me or smell me or anything. I'm way out of my hive somewhere else on the planet. Okay, then I'll ask Jack. Nope, Jack won't tell. I made him promise he wouldn't tell. Damn it. Stupid, lousy, tight-lipped, stab-happy double agents. Doesn't Trollian have some kind of viewport feature? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure only Solix knows how to set that up. And he's been incommunicado for hours for some reason. Anyway, that whole feature seems totally invasive and largely pointless to me, so just forget it. Yeah, okay. Here we are about to embark on an espionage mission. A spying tool sounds totally useless. Another great point, Captain. Whatever. Just get your ass in here so we can dethrone this goddamn queen. It'll mean one less god boss we have to fight. Fine, I'll be right there. Just try not to lose too much of your mystery blood and die. Need Jack a few minutes ago. Just find the kid you've been looking for. He's got a pretty sharp tongue and can't seem to keep it sheathed. He should line up front that you'll know stranger to shop objects yourself. He uh, still won't shut up! Shit! 
He doesn't seem to care about the wound. He's just going on and on about the freakish color of his blood. He doesn't want you to look at it. Just look away, he says. You gotta admit, now you're curious. You look at your knife. You don't see what the big deal is. Nothing special. This kid's out of his mind. But he's still blubbering on and on about it. It seems he's the only one of his kind with this mutant candy red blood. An outcast. He thinks he was put on this planet in an ocean of his own blood to be taunted. Punished for something. Saddest story you've ever heard. Gotta do something to shut him up! Car Cat, be in cahoots with Jack. You and your like-blooded accomplice soon put Operation Regiserp into motion, a contingency plan which the Archangel conveniently had on file and named himself. If it were drafted by a legitimate contingency firm, it would ostensibly have been given a better title. Your whole team executes the plan along with the course of its journey, employing espionage, mind control tactics, political sabotage, vicious interrogations, and cold-blooded assassinations. Everyone does their part and you begin to learn the true meaning of teamwork, as well as this troll disease called friendship. But before a single step is taken, Jack briefs you on the intelligence uncovered by one of his agents. It is an advantage over the Queen you will seize upon while she has let her guard down. With each prototyping by each player, the royalty of both sides would evolve. The Queen with her Ring of Orbs 12-fold would first take on the claws and rigid carapace of your Lucis. And then the wings and scales of Terezi's young dragon. And then the horns and gills and cloven hooves of Gamzee's fallen custodian. And so it would continue. Though a Queen is a vain creature, she is also sworn to her duty. She would be braced for the heavy load of augmentation ahead. She would certainly withstand the eight eyes of an arachnid. The fairy wings might at worst be frivolous, and the great bull horns could even be regarded as striking additions. For that matter, the sultry lips of a mother grub might very plausibly suit her. She perhaps would wear a brave face even behind a dignified mustache, and the centauring of her lower torso could transpire without much complaint. She would dutifully indulge a lactating udder, and when all was said and done, doubling her headcount would surely be insult to elevenfold injury, but nothing she hadn't essentially endured already, all in the name of her kingdom. But she would spare herself all of these additional debasements. Because before the rest came, there would be one corruption to her figure she could not abide. Her vanity wouldn't allow it. She could not stand bearing the visage of the most loathsome creature known to existence. So vile is its appearance, so contemptible its purpose. All depictions of the creature, let alone members of its population, are permanently banned from any jurisdiction in the reach of her agents. Things of its kind go by many names, and so does the reviled patron god they herald. The Great Detestation, King Pawn Squatter, Speaker of the Vast Joke, or most commonly, Billius Slick. His true name is of course forbidden, and wearing his face is where she drew the line. She removed the ring and concealed it in the royal vault while she was quite sure no one was looking. She then retired to her private chamber from which she would dispatch orders, no one the wiser of her disadvantage. Or so she thought. Red Team, execute Operation Regisurp. The operation in time would be a total success. The banished quasi-royal would make the future Alternian wasteland her home. Until she was given a new purpose. But at the onset, you would know nothing of the Queen's aversion to an amphibious likeness, or about her orbs twelvefold, or any such details. You were informed of her disadvantage and would act accordingly. You and your red teammates would work to dethrone the Queen in your session, while the blue team members would take on the entirely separate set of royal adversaries in their own session. This was to be a competition, after all. Or so you thought. You would begin to notice a strange pattern. The blue team's prototypings would affect the mutations of your session's underlings, and your prototypings would affect theirs. Though the signs pointed to two distinct sessions, two sets of mystic ruins, two opposing teams, two separate chains of connected players, this was all misleading. You were joining a particularly unusual bifurcated session meant from the start to receive all 12 players through two separate connection chains. A session with one sky about which 12 planets would circle, with one army of dark and one of light, with one pair of kings and one pair of queens, and with one cantankerous archagent and his typical disdain for authority. 
It wouldn't be until later in the session when the full chain was nearly closed that you would realize the truth. The truth was it had always been the same session all along. That your teams were not competing, but cooperating toward a common goal. In the more drawn-out form of this adventure's narrative, figuring this out would have been a huge deal. We would have been completely blown away by this stunning revelation. Well, same session all along. Really? Huh. But since we've decided to engage this epic in shorthand, you feel you must insist that we continue with this expository interlude. It would turn out the arrangement of planets looked like this, rather. Bifurcated from each other, each team appearing to compromise a distinct chain in a distinct session without the luxury of the complete picture we see here. It appeared that way until it was time to link the two chains, completing the circuit of twelve and uniting the teams. For these final two links, Skya had a plan. As it did with the order of every preceding link, as it did with the paradoxical seating of its own players on the surface of the planet it would later devastate to buy itself time. Its plan was as inescapable as all others, as inevitable as the reckoning it would ultimately face. Mobius Double Reach Around After watching the phrases Mobius Double and Reach Around toggle for a few seconds while in a sort of stupor, you finally snap out of it. Your attention drifts toward these two symbols. You would try to be these mysterious characters, but you suspect you would fail so you don't bother. They're way too mysterious for you to be them yet. Seriously, what's up with these guys? Do they live underwater or something? What's their deal? We'll learn about them a little later. For that matter, what about this young lady? What is her deal? We'll probably find out about her later, too. It will probably be quite some time before you get to be her. It could very well be pages and pages and pages. And pages and pages and pages. Seriously, it could take forever. Your name is Kanaya Merriam. You are one of the few of your kind who can withstand the blistering Alternian sun, and perhaps the only one who enjoys the feel of its rays. As such, you are one of the few of your kind who has taken a shining to landscaping. You have cultivated a lush oasis around your hive, and in particular, you have honed your craft through the art of topiary, sculpting your trees to match the puffy oracles from your dreams. You have embraced the tool of this trade, which conveniently is the weapon of choice for those who would hunt the heinous broods of the undead which crawl from the sands at sunrise to feast on the light and the living. It would be convenient if you actually hunted them, but it is, of course, far too dangerous, every bit as suicidal as attempting to poach the terrible muscle beasts who roam at night. So you indulge in your bright fascination with the grim through literature. Just before the sun goes down and you join your floor and rest, you immerse yourself in tales of rainbow drinkers and shadow droppers and forbidden passion. You are one of the few of your kind with jade green blood. As such, you are one of the few who could be selected and raised by a virgin mother grub, an event so rare as to elude documented precedent. She would defend you from desert threats, and though her life would be short, in time you would assure her of progeny. You are one of the few of your kind whose affection for the aesthetic strongly overpowers instinctive regard for the utilitarian. As such, you are one of the few of your kind who has developed a zeal for fashion and design and lively colorful patterns. You decorate your hive with flora and fabric, as delicately or aggressively as inspiration demands. You are a seamstress, or a rag ripper, or a tree trimmer, or a lumberjack, whichever you care to be. And your unique hive is equipped with a great supply of advanced technology to accommodate your interests. The technology and indeed the hive itself were all recovered from the ruins nearby when you were very young. The seed of your hive was deployed on the volcanic rocks beneath the sand with the assistance of your Lucis and her remarkable burrowing skills, and you have lived there happily together since. You know the ruins and the hive and everything here that is not sand and rock originated from the world of your dreams. You also know that one day you will visit this world while you are awake. That day is today. Your troll tag is Grim Auxiliatrix, and you tend to enunciate each word you speak very clearly and carefully. What will you do? Kanaya, equip chainsaw. What chainsaw? You are quite sure there is no chainsaw leaning on that bookshelf. There is, however, a tube of lipstick on the floor. Fine, equip that then. All right, let's settle down. No need to get hysterical. Oh, there goes your wardrobe fire again. Never a dull moment in fashion when the randomized cycle is on. Kanaya, apply. You can choose between your trademark jade or black, even though a troll's lips are naturally black. But they can always be blacker, and a lady with a true sense of style knows this. 
In any case, you think you'll mix things up and go with green for a while. Kanaya, answer CC. Hello! Hey! Kanaya, hi! Glub, 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 glub! <laughs> you seem more excited than usual. Or less. I can't tell. Help me tell without saying glub. Glub, 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 glub! <laughs> I'm going to type this face now, hmm, even though no one knows how to make a mouth do a question shape like that. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really control the globs. Yes, you can, but that's fine. You can glub to the content of your collapsing and expanding bladder-based aquatic vascular system if it means you are excited about something. I am excited! Okay, why? Everything we are about to do next is exciting. It is always exciting. I'm excited! <laughs> Pachoo! It looks like one of your letters got away from you. <laughs> yeah, I really launched that one. You fogged an innocent D loitering over there by the shout pole, minding its own business. <laughs> glub, glub, glub! <laughs> hey! Let's stop being retarded for a minute. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm just worked up about this game. It'll be great. I've been waiting a long time to get started. We all have. I thought so. I have been cloaked in a mood of perpetual anticipation for some time as well. We should compare notes, even though we are on different teams. Well, not really. Hmm, really? See, this is why we should be comparing notes! What notes would you like to submit for comparison? Hmm... Well, I'm going to join my team pretty late. I think I have to. I'll need to connect after my goofball Moirail does, so I can keep my goggles on his nefarious escapades. It's a tough job, but it's important. Everyone has an important job to do. Yeah. Isn't that what you're doing, too? Joining late to keep an eye on yours? I don't know for a fact that she is mine. <laughs> you're not supposed to know for a fact, dummy. You just do what you think is right. And even if you were wrong, the worst that happened was you helped somebody. And helped the whole world, too. I know. But what if I don't really want her to be that? Glub, 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 shrug. Yeah. Glub glub shrug is the right attitude, I think. Our minds are already made up anyway, aren't they? Yes, probably. Your clouds tell you everything, so what do you even have to worry about? They don't tell me everything, just as I am sure she doesn't whisper everything to you. That's true. Oh shucks, now I'm going to get sad. She'll be gone soon. Though, I guess it will be a relief not to have to worry about keeping her voice down anymore. I wonder if any other kid on the planet has as many burdens in the fire as you. I doubt it. They aren't burdens. Okay, I guess they are. <laughs> but I love them, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Because this is why I'm here. On that note, I think I'm going to go say goodbye to her. Maybe you should too while you have the chance. Even though I'll see her again soon, which still seems kind of strange to me. But that's why this is all so exciting! <laughs> Kanaya, bye! Kanaya, check on Lucis. You had nearly forgotten. Today her time would come. Maybe you should be there in her final moment. But then it isn't exactly final, is it? Death is pretty confusing without the finality. It's too late. You'd better change back into your work clothes. No point in getting a good dress dirty. Kanaya, go downstairs. She brought you this far. Now to live up to your end of the bargain. Kanaya, operate. Kanaya, capture log that thing. You secure the matriarch through your chastity modus. Safe and sound. You will serendipitously discover the key to unlock this card when and only when you are ready to use this item, and not a moment before. Look at this mess. 
All this blood and sunlight is stirring bright feelings within. You often fantasize about being a true rainbow drinker from your literature. It would be a life of darting between the shadows of persecution and being misunderstood, and of romance. You would drink heavily from its multicolored well, and the hemospectrum would be your wine list preceding the great feast of passion. Surely it couldn't hurt, while no one is looking. Can I? Just a taste. Blah. Kanaya, meddle with more rail. What? Just wanted to know, is your Lucis dead yet? You then proceed to have the rest of this conversation we already read, bugging and fussing and meddling through the special and magical union one can only describe as being in war allegiance with another. At least. You guess that's how you would describe it. Maybe. Troll romance sure is confusing. You will put her out of your mind for a while. It should be hours before you have to connect with her anyway. Might as well pack this thing up and head inside. Oh, what now? What could this guy want? It never ends. Kanaya, answer CA. Can make a talk to me. Do something! Who? Your no good Kanaiwin fucking backstabbing girl crush! That's who! Overstating our relationship won't make me feel very cooperative. It's paler red than that, okay? Psh! That is a fucking laugh and you know it. Everyone does. So help me out! Tell her to talk to me. I think she blocked me. Y you got to! Why do I got to? I don't got to, and every time you take my help for granted, I feel like I got to a little less. What, Elwa? You are so the village to wield the wise when it comes to auspicing. You can't let a grudge go by. You won't stick your busy stem betwixt. So get with the program, fussy fangs. If your slander weren't so predictable, I'd block you too for saying that. Has it occurred to you she may have blocked you because you are very overbearing? I just said that aloud now in your silly accent and had a private moment of enjoyment. Who gives a shit why she blocked me or about my fucking manners? Come on, you got away with her? I figure if you're going to auspicize any two brine suckers who sneer at each other in a funny way, you might as well make it official and be ours, right? Your black solicitation just seems really indecent. What do you want from her anyway? She made me something per a prior arrangement. She will deliver it when we meet in the game, but I don't know what the logistics are yet. I'm trying to connoiter with her here, but she's blowing me off again. Fickle, dirt scraping land hag. What is it? Cam, stupid. What do you think? It's a fucking gizmo to blow up the world or something? Okay, well, not that obviously. But something that'll kill all land dwellers. What else would I be after? Can you just for a moment entertain the thoughts of one untouched by megalomaniacal derangement and tell me why I'd want to assist you with that? Well, I'm not going to worry will kill you, am I? That would be fucking unconscionable. What kind of friend would I be? Also, speculate for a moment that self-preservation might not be what would sway my decision. Yeah, go ahead and kiss us off, but there'll be blood on your hands. You could either play along as our auspices and do a little mediating like you were fucking hatched to, or what she and me do all into fucking full-fledged kismesses, the kind like you don't get once in 10,000 sweeps. You know that's what it would be. There would be rainbow rivers running through star systems and all nebulizing like liquid fireworks. It will be beautiful and heartbreaking all at once. You should read up on your history instead of pouring through that god-awful sunny rubbish. It's just laborious listening to this. I'm sorry, none of it matters. Yeah, it does. It's important. Sorry, but the fate of the race and the purity of the bloodline is important. Excuse me for being concerned. 
I know, but you should really know by now the world will end tonight regardless. Land and sea dwellers alike will all die because of the game we are about to play. And I agree the fate of our race is important, but it's in my hands now. All of ours, really. Huh. Well, okay. Really? Ordinarily, I'd call bullshit on terrible, stinking BS like that. But I know you don't really lie about stuff. Unless it's to yourself. But that's why I bother even talking to you. I wouldn't even be here saying any of this otherwise. So did your clouds tell you that? The doomsday scenario in particular... Mm, no, not exactly. I got clouds, and they don't tell me shit! They hide nothing but misfortune and monstrosities. Fucking pain in the ass fucking clouds. So how do you know, then? I have another source. Okay, well, you are jacked tight the fuck into this thing in so many ways, I don't know what to say anymore. What ever? We will just play and find out, I guess. So can you tell her to talk to me anyway? No. God damn it! She and me are teammates. We've got our power or something. You aren't actually on the same team. Fuck! Fine, I get it. I'll step off. You don't want to be our auspices, because you don't want to get locked into that sort of relation with her. I can respect that. No, that's not it. Yeah, it is. Your real feelings are on pretty awful ruddy, methinks. Everybody know what was it. Especially that ass-blood cat. He and me, how you so pegged about that, it's upright silly. But it's cool, it's totally fine, don't worry. I'll leave you alone and give you a shot. It's unbelievable. Her patience. What? Whoa, whoa, wait. Who? Never mind. Okay, wait. Did she talk to you today? What did she say? Or glub or whatever? Something about longing to touch you indiscreetly. What? And that she's basically in the scarlet throes for you, as deep in the flushed quadrant as one can be. Wait, did she actually say that? In confidence? To the letter. Can you copy exactly what she said? Absolutely not. This is bullshit. You're BSing me in some way awful. You don't lie, but you do tease. And I'll transfuse my kick-ass royal blood out with incontinent muscle beast discharge if I won't know when I'm getting hooked. Yeah, she's just a concerned Myrail, looking out for you, that's all. Oh, what the fuck? See, I'm telling you, you got to play your cards right. What do you mean? If you're not sorry about how will you define yourself to people, you can splash into the Moirail zone before you know which way's upward. Oh. Hmm. Can. It's hard. What? Being a kid and growing up. It's hard and nobody understands. Kanaya, return to room. There is a lot to do before you enter. There will be a lot of people to talk to and help along the way. No, not meddle with or mediate. Help! Damn it! You are very helpful. You have a lot of inside information on what you and your co-players are about to face. You are jacked tight the fuck into this thing in so many ways we don't know what to say anymore. And it's not just cloud visions either. You have another source. Kanaya, consult source. In one dream, the clouds pointed you to the address of a server hidden in an obscure pocket of a realm unknowable to mortals. It contains a journal written by a young member of an alien species. She has documented her experiences playing the game you are about to play. You can only assume this took place a long time ago. This race is likely ancient, preceding yours by millions of sweeps. Maybe billions. You like to try to imagine the adventures of these players. Were they successful in repopulating their race? Did they manage to protect their matriarch and hatch a new mother grub? Could they hold it together, or were they torn apart by the complex social dynamics, 
the mates for chips and more allegiances and auspicisms and kismicissitudes that will surely plague your group along the way. You have little doubt they succeeded with flying colors. You have little doubt their victory was because of their great leader, a great heroine, the tentacle therapist. From what she recorded, it seems the group had very little knowledge of what they were getting into. And yet, they appear to have been the only of their kind to have risen to the challenge in the session stacked heavily against them. You were convinced her leadership was the difference. It would be nice to have the chance to talk to her. Alas, she's likely been dead for millennia. Only the incomplete record of a long-forgotten quest remains. On the other hand, if you were to discover her quest ended in failure, it might be somewhat disillusioning. But that thought never crossed your mind.